The Steam Deck just got a major software upgrade and you have to check out Emu Deck. How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great weekend so far. For today's video, I figured I'd jump into the Steam Deck world of news because there's some really cool stuff to talk about. I mentioned at the beginning here that we're gonna be talking about a new software update, a new beta update, and an awesome emulation program called Emu Deck. You have to check this one out. Before I jump into the video though, I'm just gonna do the classic YouTuber thing and ask you to subscribe and set your notifications to all. I'm working hard to get to 10,000 subscribers and it would be awesome if you help me get there. So let's start out with the stable version of the Steam Deck software update. There are a ton of new features that Valve went ahead and added and there's also a ton of fixes included as well. The first thing they added that I know a lot of people are going to like is dual trackpad typing on the on-screen game keyboard. So now when you have the keyboard up on the screen, you can use both trackpads to cover each side of the keyboard. In a recent video, I was talking about that on-screen keyboard that you used to have on the desktop mode that was basically a split keyboard like this one is, but it's the old big picture version of the keyboard. So it's actually like graphically split in half. I don't know, it just took me a little while to get used to it. I'm not still not great at typing on it just yet, but I can definitely see why so many people were in the comments saying that they actually prefer that keyboard. It just takes a little bit to get the hang of. And there's so many people who used to use it in big picture mode that I'm glad Valve went ahead and added it into the Steam Deck software. The other big update that the keyboard got, thankfully, is that you can now use the game mode keyboard when you're over in the desktop mode. So like I just mentioned before, the way it worked is that when you had Steam open, if you held the Steam button and X, it would bring up the old big picture mode or old Steam OS keyboard. And it took a little while to open. It kind of opened wherever you had the mouse cursor. It was a little bit inelegant. So now you have the game mode keyboard. It pops up instantly when you hit the Steam and X buttons, which really made me happy. And it works really well. I went over to Google Docs. I tried typing on the uh, dual trackpad mode, as you can see. I'm still not great at it, but when I switched over to the D-pad and A button mode, it worked just fine. Now graphically, it's a little odd because it comes up from the bottom just like it does in the game mode, but you can still see the taskbar and in this Linux desktop modes version of the start menu, I don't really know what to call it. That is all still there. I'm assuming because, you know, they don't want to cover that up in case you need to access any of that. But other than that, the keyboard works great. It also works with the touchscreen. And speaking of the touchscreen, they fixed a bug where the touchscreen wouldn't work when you take the Steam Deck out of sleep mode. Valve also implemented a great fix to the Wi-Fi. So I was actually getting this issue with my Steam Deck and I can confirm it was resolved. So basically what I would do is when I would turn it on out of sleep mode, it would have the little exclamation point over the Wi-Fi, even though I was connected, it would say that I had no connection. And then I would have to retype in the same password for the Wi-Fi I was already connected to. After that, it would work fine. It obviously just got annoying having to do it every time I took my Steam Deck out of sleep mode. So I was really happy to see that they fixed that. And they fixed it really quickly, right? Like people have been complaining about it for a week now and they fixed it in a week. I gotta give them props there. The next cool change they implemented is that they improved the speed at which the Steam Deck will download library art for new games when you turn it on. That was causing a little bit of stuttering on the home screen menu. I noticed that as well. And now that it downloads them much quicker, that stuttering is almost completely gone. And I hate stuttering in games. I hate it in operating systems. So anything they can do to get rid of any of the stutter this device has, I am going to be happy about. So I'm glad that's fixed as well. And then the last big feature that came along with this stable update is that you can now calibrate both the haptics of the track pads and you can calibrate the dead zone on the joysticks. Now I went into this advanced controls menu on my Steam Deck and I noticed that the dead zone is incredibly tiny on the joystick when I pressed Y to test it out. Like I barely moved it and it picked up the movement so that's pretty cool because as you all remember before the Steam Deck came out there was an issue people were having on like the first day launch units where it seemed like the device already had stick drift which is obviously terrible. No one wants stick drift on their Steam Deck. It turned out to be a software issue so now you can go into the actual software. You can see how your joysticks are operating. And in the future, if you do uh, get stick drift, which would be horrible, you can increase the dead zone of your stick and kind of fix it temporarily if you don't want to RMA it and send it into Valve for them to fix it. So between this and the on-screen keyboard coming over to desktop mode and also having improved performance, I got to say, this is one of my favorite software updates so far. But there's a beta update that's also available for the Steam Deck that has a lot more features that I think a lot more people are going to be excited excited about. The first one is that they finally added TPM support to the BIOS. If you don't know what that means, I don't really either. I just know that it's a feature you need on the Steam Deck to install Windows 11 natively to the SSD inside the device. I was running Windows 11 off a micro SD card that's 500 gigabytes before because if you use Rufus and set the Windows 11 ISO to flash as Windows to go, it'll be able to run off of a micro SD card. And a lot of people pointed out that if you do that, it decreases the lifespan of the micro.
Riker SD card. And yeah, that's true. I just don't really care because I thought it'd be fun to install Windows on a micro SD card and run it on the Steam Deck. I just thought that'd be a cool thing to do. It was a cool thing to do, but now we can just install it natively to the SSD and everything will work fine. Unfortunately, there's still no dual booting support from Valve. So if you install Windows 10 or 11, it's going to wipe Steam OS off your device. It's actually really easy to get Steam OS back. You just make a recovery drive. There's a whole tutorial on the Valve website, and then you just reflash the OS onto your Steam Deck and everything should be good to go. But even though dual booting isn't officially supported, nothing's really stopping you from creating a partition on the Steam Deck's SSD and installing Windows there. Now, I haven't tried this out. I have a 256 gigabyte SSD in my Steam Deck, and I've been downloading a ton of ROMs, which we'll talk about in a minute. So I'm basically using all of that internal storage right now. So I didn't really feel like deleting a bunch of stuff to make a partition and try this out. But I have seen a bunch of people on the subreddit say that they were able to get this working. So take it with a grain of salt, but it should be pretty simple to figure out if you want to go ahead and do it yourself. The fact that just a couple weeks ago is when we got the drivers from Valve for Windows on the Steam Deck. And now just a couple weeks later, we're getting the TPM update to have it work with Windows 11. Hopefully they're just as quick with official dual booting support. They said it's coming sooner rather than later. I'm just excited to try that out because if they have it officially working, Working, right? Like if there's a way to just select which operating system you want to boot from in the official Steam Deck's menu when you start it up, that would be awesome. I want that functionality on the device so I can finally play Destiny 2 because even running Windows 11 off of a micro SD card, Destiny 2 does not like that. It doesn't run very well at all if you run Windows 11 off of a micro SD. And then I don't really want to wipe my entire SSD just to play Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck. So right now I am Destiny 2-less on my Steam Deck. I would like to get there and be able to play it. And it seems like I won't be waiting too much longer. Now there's another really big issue Valve fixed with this beta software update. So a few people on the subreddit are having issues where when they plug a USB-C uh, dongle like dock situation into their Steam Deck and use an external monitor, it basically keeps the display off on their Steam Deck and kind of bricks it. Valve has been on the subreddit telling people how to fix it. And it seems like that's working for most people, but they've not only added more support for more USB type C dock which is good because that'll stop this issue from happening. They also added a button combo, which is holding the three dots button and the volume down, which will reset the PD contract and make it so your screen turns back on. If when you plug in a USB-C dock, it stops working. So that's good to know. I hope that makes it into an official update sooner rather than later, because that's a really irritating issue to have to face. And it would honestly scare me if it happened to me, I'd be like, uh oh, did I already brick my Steam Deck? That would be horrible. And then this other inclusion makes me really excited. So the first Steam Deck I had, the 64, four gigabyte one that I upgraded to a 256 gigabyte one. After I did that, I wasn't able to launch Windows from a micro SD card, which is kind of weird. Like when I would start it up, I would get a little error in the top left corner of the screen and then it wouldn't let me even like select it to boot from. It wouldn't show up in the boot menu, which was really annoying. Then on my personal Steam Deck that I pre-ordered last year, once that came in and I installed Windows 11 to go on a micro SD, I put that in, it doesn't have the error at all. It just boots right from the micro SD card. So it seemed like my other Steam Deck was being weird. So I went on the support forums and I was going back and forth with Valve and they ultimately said that booting from a micro SD card is not officially supported. And once I got to that roadblock, I kind of gave up on it. But then when my Steam Deck, the one I pre-ordered last year came in, I took the same micro SD card that had Windows 11 installed on it, tried to boot from that and everything worked just fine. There's a line in the changelog for this new beta update that says they added more support for more micro SD cards. So for the few people I saw in the subreddit who were also having the same issue as me, where you get that error when you would start it up and try and boot from a micro SD card, try it out now because it might work with this beta update. And then the last inclusion I'm going to touch on here is that in the quick access menu, they added the ability to uncap the frame rate. So before you had a few options, 15 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second, there was no way to leave it uncapped. Now in this beta update, you can uncap it, which is cool. You can see how powerful your Steam Deck can actually get. There are a ton more smaller changes that come with both the stable and beta versions of this update. I've been messing around with the beta update all day and it seems to work just fine. So if you want some of the features that came along with it a little bit early, just head into your settings menu and set your release to beta instead of stable. Then you'll get the beta update. My Steam Deck had to restart a couple times when I was installing it, which is a little bit scary. But then after about five minutes, it finished up and everything was working just fine. Next, I got to tell you about this new thing called Emu Deck that you can get on the Steam Deck completely for free. It's not in the Discover store. There's no flat pack for it yet. But if you go to emudeck.com, not only is the on-screen text tutorial on how to install it super simple to follow, they also link to a great YouTube video on how to do it from Retro Game Core. Now this Emu Deck application is great for a few reasons. The first one being that it installs retro
retro arch or retro arc. I don't really know how to say it. I'm sure you guys will let me know down in the comments. Basically it installs that, it gets everything exactly where it needs to be, but it also gives you some great hotkeys for the Steam Deck and in the emulators themselves, it orients them perfectly for the Steam Deck. So you don't have to do any extra legwork. It also gives you hotkeys for the Steam Deck's controls automatically. So if you hit L3 and R3, it takes you to the retro arch menu. If you hit select and start twice, that quits retro arch. You have select and A that pauses the emulation, select an R2 fast forwards, select an L1 is load save state and select an R1 is save save state. So I went ahead and installed it, which took about five minutes. And the coolest thing is that it also comes along with this other application called Steam ROM Manager. And when you use that, it basically runs through all of your folders, finds all of your games and gives them poster, banner and icon art in Steam and adds them itself as non-Steam games. You do have to run it with Steam closed so it can kind of work. But when it's finished, when you open up Steam, I had Super Mario World sitting right there and I had Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So when I downloaded my PS1 ROMs, they were in 7-zip format and that didn't really work with Steam ROM Manager, like I couldn't find them. So I added the 7-zip file extension to Steam ROM Manager because you can add any file extension you want, but then Duck Station doesn't work with that. So I had to find ROMs that were in a very specific format. But other than that, it has worked flawlessly right out of the gate and that's awesome. And even cooler, if you don't want the games added to Steam individually, you can use Emulation Station DE once this is installed, it'll work just fine with all of the button inputs already mapped, which is great because that's the worst part of doing any emulation is remapping all of the buttons. The best thing here for me is that it's adding the art to Steam and making them feel like Steam games. So like seeing Castlevania Symphony of the Night just show up on my Steam Deck's home screen was awesome in itself. And the fact that it was so easy to use was great because I'm not a super emulation heavy type person, but now I could definitely see myself becoming one because this just works so well. The only issue you've got to be aware of is that if you limit the screen frame rate to 30 frames per second, it'll cause stuttering and glitchy sound. But if you put it back up to 60 or uncapped, it'll work just fine. The only issues I encountered as of now is that it doesn't work with the Steam version of RetroArch. You have to use the Flatpak version of it, which is fine in my opinion, because it's adding all the games individually anyway. And then also the only way to really find out about updates is through the Discord because it's not a Flatpak. It's not in the Discover store. You got to download it from the Emudex site, but it does give you two options to download a version that installs games to your SSD and then another version that installs them to your SD card, which is great. I might do a tutorial showing it off in the future, but again, if you want to check this out on your Steam Deck, just head over to emudeck.com.